High-ticket designer items are seen by dishonest sellers and scammers as a quick way to get rich. Whenever you're purchasing a pre-loved designer item on the second-hand market, you may come across a lot of scams. Over the years, I've seen hundreds of buyers giving their money to scammers when purchasing their designer items. Most of them weren't able to get their money back and have lost hundreds or even thousands of dollars. But why did this happen? What makes us trust scammers and lose money? What I noticed is that it's about some specific tricks scammers use. I want you to know the exact tricks scammers are using to get your money and how to expose them. Most people believe that the only thing you need to do is to authenticate your item, while in reality authentication is just a part of verifying your item. And there are many other scams you need to be aware of to shop for love designer items safely. By the end of this course, you will learn 10 most popular red flags you may notice when shopping for a pre-love designer items, especially from private sellers. You will learn the most popular types of scams and how to avoid them. And some of the scams will be obvious to you, but I can tell you how many people lost their money because they weren't aware of these type of scams. So let's start. As a luxury lover who's been selling and buying designer handbags on a daily basis for 10 years in one of the most untrusted countries in the world, I've probably seen 99% of scams and possible tricks that scammers are using to sell you a fake handbag or just to scam you. And I've also been scammed several times, which was quite a painful experience. But what I want is to help you to avoid this. Meet Janet, a designer handbag lover who's been saving for her first Louis Vuitton handbag. She's now ready to make a purchase and we'll help Janet to buy her first designer handbag safely. So let's start from her question. What are you saying? I can't believe it's that unsafe. There are a lot of reputable sellers. Are they all scammers? Of course not. But what I notice is when you're buying your first designer item, it's quite a substantial purchase for you. And if it's a substantial purchase that you might have been saving for for years or months, you tend to look for the best price. And the best price is usually offered by private sellers. And that's when the problems emerge. If you're currently exploring Facebook groups, Facebook Marketplace, eBay, Poshmark, and other platforms where private sellers are listing their items, I believe this course will help you. So as we start for our convenience, let's break down the process of purchasing your luxury handbag into five stages. On each of these stages, there are red flags that might indicate that there is something wrong with the seller or the item. And the goal of this course is to help you to identify these red flags. So Janet has just found the listing of her dream handbag. I'm so excited! Let's see how she can tell that there is something wrong with the item or the seller just by looking at the listing. Here is our listing and I want to ask you, what do you think? Would you buy this item? Do you think the seller is reliable? Well, if it comes with a receipt, it must be authentic. A lot of listings from private sellers look like this. The item comes with a receipt and authentic packaging. And I want this to be a red flag for you. Hear me out. A red flag does not necessarily mean that this is a scam. What a red flag means is that scammers might use this to trick you into believing that the purse is authentic just based on the fact that it has a receipt and authentic packaging. They take pictures with receipt and packaging just because it's what they have and what they're selling as a part of the bundle. However, using receipts and authentic packaging is a favorite scammer's tool to trick you into believing that the item you see on pictures is authentic. The most important thing is not to base your decision on one and only fact that the item comes with a receipt. And I feel like Janet has a question. But I don't understand. How can a purse with a receipt be fake? There are three big reasons to not trust receipts. Here they are. One can get a receipt from another authentic handbag. One might get a fake receipt. But the biggest reason is it's impossible to match the receipt and the actual purse. Let's explore this a little bit further. Fake receipts exist in a multitude of versions. Some of them can be easily spotted as they contain spelling errors, for instance, while other fake receipts are more advanced. There are also, let's say, super fake receipts that look just like authentic receipts. Like this one. It's fake. That's exactly the reason why authenticators don't look at the paperwork at all while authenticating an item. Real receipts. But where do scammers get authentic receipts and packaging? Are they buying authentic purses? That's expensive. That's actually a great question. From what I've seen, some sellers are selling their receipts because receipts also have some kind of perks like a guarantee for your handbag. If you still have a receipt, the purse might still be under brand's guarantee. 
And I've seen some sellers selling authentic receipts just with that intention to, to provide someone with the right to claim a free repair. Whenever they're selling the receipt to another person, they're just giving this right to claim this free repair, for instance. And there might be a lot of other reasons. Like basically they see it as something valuable and they need money. And the last reason, it's impossible to match the receipt and the actual purse. Now let's start with an example and let's take a look at a typical Louis Vuitton receipt. Even though they vary in terms of paper from region to region, the information that is included in the receipt is pretty much the same. And it includes the purchase date, the style number that consists of a letter and five digit, and that is not a date code, that's just style number for like a, a number that defines a Louis Vuitton Neverfull, for instance. An item's name, like Louis Vuitton Monogram Neverfull bag, and the item's price. Note that this receipt does not include the date code. You can match this receipt with any Louis Vuitton Neverfull handbag released in this time frame. The situation is the same for other brands. Even a receipt from a brand that has unique serial numbers for each of their items doesn't guarantee that it, it came with the same item. Because guess what? Counterfeiters learned how to copy the serial numbers. Counterfeiters know that a serial number on the paperwork must match a serial number in the purse. So that's exactly what they do. And it's not just a random story to scare you off. Bottom line, whenever you're about to buy an item that comes with a receipt and probably authentic packaging, don't base your decision solely on the fact that it comes with a receipt. Because a lot of people think that may, they may skip authentication, they may skip the process of verifying the item just because it comes with a receipt and they perceive it as a guarantee that the item is real, authentic and the seller is telling the truth. It might not be like this. So Janet has found another item she likes. This one is definitely authentic. Take a look at the listing. Do you think everything is good and you would purchase this purse? Or is there anything wrong? One of the biggest scam on the market is obviously buying a fake handbag. To be able to tell whether a handbag in question is real or fake, we authenticators need to see a lot of details. Typically, this set includes the leather, the stitching, um, the inside material, and the quality of this material all hardware engravings, all blind stamps, heat stamps, and all serial numbers or date codes. These pictures are crucial, so if they are missing in the listing, you will need to request them from the seller. And again, that doesn't necessarily mean that the item is real or fake or the seller is a scammer or a legit person. It only means that you need to pay attention to it. Don't forget to ask for detailed pictures and send them for authentication. So this seller is selling a handbag for $1,000 or $2,000 and they only took two pictures? I believe as a buyer, you deserve the best photos of the merchandise. Third one, blurry pics. She's just not a professional seller. That's the reason the pictures are blurry. In general, this red flag is very similar to what we've already discussed. There is a listing of the item you like, and there might be a lot of pictures, but they're all blurry and you can't see the details, you can't see anything. There is another variation of this red flag when the listing contains a video of the item. I want this to be a red flag for you. And that means that you need to request the additional pictures from the seller if you really love the item. Do not ever purchase an item if the pictures are missing. Do I need to tell you that it can be a trap from a scammer? Four, the price is too low. Okay, I know it's cheap, but she just doesn't know how much this bag costs. When the price of an item you like is incredibly good, it's hard to not give in to temptation to pay instantly on the spot just to take advantage of this incredible deal. That desire is exactly what Scammer wants. This red flag is quite obvious. We luxury lovers sometimes act like treasure hunters. Deep down inside, we all want to believe that there is someone out there who's selling an authentic Louis Vuitton handbag for a hundred. Here's what I need to tell you. My 10 years of buying and selling designer items daily, I've only seen two times. So in 99% of cases, when the price is too good to be true, the item is probably fake. Five, pictures from different items. Do you think this listing looks good? Well, that's a scam. 
a lot of people are skeptical about authentication because we are basically authenticating by pictures. And pictures are not seen as a very reliable method. Why? Because it's easy to fake something. Here's what's wrong with this listing. This bag was actually sent for authentication by one of our customers. And if we only examine the pictures, the details are pretty much consistent with an authentic Chanel bag. However, if we look closely, we'll realize that these are pictures from several items. Take a look at the stitching here. It's different from the rest of the pictures. Take a look at the serial number. Examine it closely. There is another picture of serial number and here it is. You can see that the first digit is different from the digit on another photo, while these must match. What the scammer hoped for is probably that the buyer will just purchase the purse and they won't be matching the details of the listing with the purse they received. And the authentication company might probably say that this item is authentic because these are pictures from authentic items. As we are finalizing the part about the listing itself, there are two main things you need to check. First, you need to check that the handbag is in the seller's possession, that the pictures were not stolen from another reputable website. Two, you need to check that the item is authentic before ordering it, before spending money. Remember that nothing guarantees the authenticity of the handbag except careful examination by a professional. The next stage of buying the purse of your dreams is communicating with the seller. Janet, what questions are you planning to ask? Okay, so I plan to ask the seller where she bought this bag and uh, whether this bag is authentic. So we'll continue with the two questions you never ask your seller. The first question you never ask your seller is where did you buy the item? And what's wrong with this question? You see, that's actually very interesting. When we're eager to buy a specific item, especially a high ticket item, we need to calm down. At this moment, you are very vulnerable because you want to hear a beautiful story that the seller is legit and they went to Paris on their honeymoon and then their husband, well, presented them with their handbag at the Louis Vuitton store, but they don't like the style anymore and that's why they are selling it. That will be a golden standard of this answer, and scammers know that. If you're dealing with a dishonest seller, that's exactly what they will do. They will tell you a beautiful story, uh, they will tell you where they purchased it, but the downside is you can never verify this information. I can tell you even more. I've been selling handbags for a lot of time, and a lot of buyers, potential buyers, came to me asking, where did you buy this item? And I realized at that point that they just want to hear this beautiful story that I bought it somewhere in Europe, in Paris preferably, um, two years ago, but uh, I don't care about the handbag anymore because I have a different handbag or my style changed, something like that. And as I'm a very honest seller, I, I just told them the truth. I bought it from a consignment store and it seemed to undermine their trust a lot because they started to doubt. Oh, I see, you bought it from a consignment store, but uh, you didn't get it from the boutique, and how can you be sure that it's authentic? All of these buyers canceled the transaction. They didn't go through the transaction with me. And I realized so what they wanted to hear was that I got it from the boutique myself, and uh, I got it in a beautiful place, uh, preferably Paris, uh, or Milan, or <laughs> any other fancy city. So that's what they wanted to hear. And the bottom line here, don't ask your seller where they got this item, just because you can't verify this information. And here comes the second question you never ask your seller. Is your purse authentic? I feel like the buyers who are asking this question, they're like shifting responsibility to the seller. They don't want to verify the item themselves and they, they really want to believe that this item is authentic. So they're just confirming this theory with a the seller and if that's a dishonest seller, they will gladly confirm this theory. They will gladly tell you a story about where they got this item, why it is authentic, that there is absolutely no doubt and no chance it could be a fake. And I can tell you how many times I've heard that from people who are selling a very obvious replica. <laughs> the right person to address this question too is the authentication company. These are the people who can actually confirm that the purse is authentic. You can ask the seller whether the item is authentic in just one case, if it's not stated in the listing. And here's why. If you get into any kind of trouble with this item, you will be able to confirm that the seller stated that the item is authentic. So the seller basically scammed you because they confirmed that the item is authentic and they have sold you a fake item. So asking questions about authenticity for peace of mind is useless, 
but if you want just the seller to confirm that the item they are selling is authentic, just in case, this is the question you need to ask. The next part is connected with payment. It's such a great deal and the seller offered me to pay a deposit, but someone will grab it before I do. Rule number one, never pay for a handbag full price or just a small deposit via bank transfer. In case of any trouble, you won't be able to return your money. If you found a handbag you can't live without, pay via PayPal invoice. That is the correct way to do that because in this way you will be able to get your money back. Make sure that you are not paying by friends and family. In order to pay via an invoice, you need to ask the seller to generate the invoice and send it to you and then you can pay it fully or partially. If you're paying in this way, your transaction is protected. If any problem emerges, you will be able to file a claim in PayPal and get your money back. Another important thing here is to make sure that the invoice contains details on the purse you're buying. Like for instance, its model, its date code or serial number, its packaging and the description of all the wear. Worst case scenario, you will get another bag that is fake and you will need to prove to the payment system that you were paying for another handbag which was authentic. That is why it's really important to have all the details in the invoice, along with the pictures of the item. It'll make your life much easier in case you come across some kind of trouble. But actually, when you're buying a pre-loved item, its condition really matters. The condition directly influences the price. That's why you need to make sure that you are getting the best condition you can. There's one important point you might not realize, but you need to check it on this stage. So the question you need to ask your seller is, has item undergone any type of restoration? It's critical to ask this question just because restoration directly influences the price. There are some cases when a restored designer purse costs much less compared to its original condition. And most of these cases are connected with any kind of dying. Here's a story from my experience. So I, several years back, I saw a listing of a stunning turquoise Chanel flap. I love the purse and uh, the color was so beautiful, but the price was actually on a lower side. It was not incredibly low, it wasn't a hundred dollars, but it still was quite low and that was a very reasonable purchase. I didn't ask this question. When I received the purse, I discovered that its color was changed at a back spa. In some parts of the purse, this beautiful turquoise color was turning into flakes and they were falling off. But I still paid a lot and I tried to confront the seller. I told her that it was not listed. Well, normal people, they do state that the item was changed from its original condition. I tried to talk with the seller who was a, an online consignment store. I told her it wasn't listed as a refurbished item and no sign of restoration was on the pictures. And she basically blocked me. <laughs> Welcome to Russia. I later sold it because I found a buyer who was okay with the restoration and of course I stated in, in the description. However, it was a very important lesson for me. Since then, I always ask this question, no matter what I buy, what brand, what, what year, what item, I always ask if the item has had any restorations in the past. And the last section is receiving your item. Janet, are you excited? I just got a package. I'm gonna open it right now. I'm so excited. Please hold down for a second because there are some things that you need to check on this stage. There are two types of issue you may come across when opening your item. Yeah, and it's still true. First, there can be no purse inside the package. And the second, there may be another purse that looks exactly like the purse you ordered, but is fake. Take a look at this picture. One of our customers sent this purse for authentication. She sent the set of pictures from the listing that was in the seller's listing and the set of pics of the bag that she received. These were two different bags. A handbag from the listing was authentic, but a handbag from the which she received, not so much. So how do you avoid problems at this stage? First and foremost, videotape the packaging. And I'm very serious. If you receive an item that is different from the item you ordered, you will need to prove to a payment system, for instance, or to the police that you weren't the one who switched the items, because that's exactly what a dishonest seller will say. What they will say is that they have sent you just the, the purse you saw in the listing and you were the one who switched the items and tries to get both the money and the purse. 
The second step is to check that this is the same handbag you ordered. Check all the details very closely and if needed, send it for authentication again. We at Bagaholic will actually do this for free. That will be the best way to avoid problems at this stage. Okay, seems like we're done here. Now that you know what you need to check, you can prevent a lot of problems when buying a designer handbag before they emerge. Congratulations! Thank you so much! I got it! It's authentic! Have you seen a scam that wasn't listed? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and don't forget to share this link with your friends so that they could avoid potential problems when buying their designer handbags too. Thank you. Bye-bye.